To get started, let's take a look at some example Node-RED flows that I have built and break down each piece and I'll explain what each piece does and then how each piece interacts with the ICE API uh, and how ultimately we can build a useful system out of this. Uh, first of all, I want to make you aware on Cisco's website there are API documents. Uh, there is the REST APIs. This is for monitoring, session management, and uh, you know troubleshooting, change of authorization, that type of thing. There's also the Cisco uh, external RESTful Services API, which is where you would go to, uh, you know, make configuration changes or push policy changes, uh, that type of thing. So uh, to get started, we're going to take a look at the monitoring side of things to just gather some useful information from the system. This is the 2.0 release of the document. Uh, you do want to take a look at the, there's multiple versions. There's some versions that of the documents that have certain things that aren't in other documents. So uh, just be be aware of that. That uh, tripped me up initially, but um, but yeah. Anyway, I'll make the document links available in the comments section below. Let's jump back to Node Red. What I have here are a couple standard flows. As you can see, the flows are on the left hand side of the screen. You actually drag and drop them into the uh, the work area. I'm going to remove that one just to sh show you how that works. So you, you click and drag the lines between them. This is the, the flow of the, the program. Uh, I have three flows built here and I'm going to talk about each of them in sequence but uh, let's first take a look at the first one. It's it's called timestamp by default. Let's open it up. Uh, the payload, there's two key pieces of information that's passed the whole way through. One is the payload and this is typically going to be your uh, key variable, your, your data that you're passing through. We'll see that a little bit later. Uh, there's also the topic. Uh, and the topic is typically a, uh, you know, a metadata type of, you know, either descriptor or something of that nature. Uh, this, this particular node, the inject node, can be set up to repeat on intervals. I'm actually going to just leave it as is for now. Uh, and when we click the flag here next to it, this button it will trigger it manually and uh, we'll be able to uh, you know have the request processed so when that's when that's pressed it's gonna call the next item which is a function block you can find this down in the function section this is more of your your uh, decision-making type of uh, functionality I open it up we're gonna just see some uh, information in here basically all I'm doing is JavaScript uh, assigning variables. The message uh, is that key. Basically the message is the object that's passed. The topic is the descriptor of sorts and the uh, payload is the uh, you know that variable that's returned. So in this case we're actually assigning some new values to message. One is the host i.e. the IP address of our identity services engine server. The user which should be self-explanatory as is password and uh, topic, as I said, is that uh, that descriptive field of sorts. This is actually all being put together to make an HTTP request, i.e. call the API. Uh, so this is the, the path uh, to that call. Then we return this message variable, or this object, back into the program and it's passed on to the next block of uh, functionality. So the third one here is the HTTP request. Uh, the method is a get. We can also select post, put, delete, uh, or we can set it through the message uh, variable or the message object overall. Uh, because of the way that we have things formatted here, we're passing uh, this all across in a URL format, username, password, at host, and then at topic, which was that URL, that full address uh, that's going to take us to the, basically it's going to make the API call that we want to make. Um, SSL is enabled. Uh, you can come in here and configure TLS settings as you need to. I have unchecked the verify server certificate, which uh, in a lab is fine. In production, you probably want to, uh, you know, build this out appropriately for security purposes. Cancel that for now and cancel out of that. If you make changes, you do want to hit the done button. 
Uh, last but not least, I have a message dot payload debug function. So what this is going to do is whatever is passed through to this point is going to be printed out over in the debug window on the right hand side here. So uh, in this case, I just want to see the raw data that's returned to me by the API. Uh, and we're going to print that out. So I'm going to hit done. We're going to hit deploy and the code will be live and ready to, uh, you know, do its thing. All right, so we're ready to go. You want to make sure you have the debug message item selected. Come over here and hit the flag to initialize the, uh, the flow. It's going to say requesting. And fairly quickly, we should get back the payload. Right, it should be printed out here. You'll notice pretty quickly, this is raw XML. Uh, we, we, if you recall, we called the session active count right here. This is the, the topic. Uh, and uh, the count came back to us, two, right? There's two active sessions. Uh, and I can actually verify that because I uh, administer the ICE system. I have my mobile phone and my laptop connected to the system. So those, uh, if you were to go into the ICE dashboard, you would see two live sessions there as well. So that's it for the first flow. That is as easy as it gets to make this API request. Uh, again, look at that documentation for Identity Services Engine and the APIs and uh, go from there. So with that being said, let's look at the second flow. The second flow I've actually taken and I made a second line uh, of code here. Uh, and I add one more box and that is the XML uh, functionality. And essentially all this is doing is taking the XML that we've seen here and turning it to a JSON format, which is what uh, is most easily worked with in Node-RED. Uh, Node-RED is based on Node.js, which is a JavaScript library uh, and platform of sorts. So uh, in this case, we're going to hit the same thing, the same timestamp button. And we're going to see instead of XML, we get an object returned. And this is a session count, you know, the, the top level session count. Count is an array. And uh, there is one array key, the first one, zero. And uh, hey, the count is two, right? So same, same uh, type of thing, right? Just taking that XML and outputting it in a JSON format. Cool. Well, this is still not terribly useful, but we're getting there. Uh, we're getting some useful information. The next piece to this is to take that output, uh, and uh, we're going to go down here. We're going to format the output, uh, and we're going to then pass it into a graphic interface object that's going to display the session count as a gauge on the screen. Uh, for this, you do have to have the... Um, down here at the bottom, the dashboard node uh, installed in Node-RED. This does not come by default. Uh, I do have another video that shows how to get this installed as part of uh, you know setting the system up. Uh, I'll let you check that out independently if you've not already done that. Uh, but uh, here, the the let's take a look at the the graphic interface object first. We'll open up this gauge. There's a there's a couple things here. There's the group. So on the interface, the physical graphic user interface, we want to uh, kind of keep this grouped. I have a single group called ICE Stats. Uh, I can edit it. There's also multiple tabs. And my first tab is called Home. That's the default tab. Uh, I can edit that and create, just simply erase this and key in a new one. Call it uh, whatever I want, you know, settings, statistics, whatever. Just cancel out of that for now. Uh, so that's a way to group these if you have a lot of different things being output to the screen. Uh, stepping down here, I have a gauge. There's a couple other compass levels, donut, so forth, different graphic uh, ways of, of presenting the data. There is a label. So I'm just going to call this active sessions, right, because we're grabbing that session count from the uh, ICE server. The value is going to be just value, uh, and I'll show you how this is 
output later. This is actually grabbing from the payload, so we'll see that. And then units, uh, active sessions is the units that we're, that we're measuring in. I also established a range, 0 to 10. This is my home lab. If I have more than 10 users, it's a pretty busy day here. So when you're done, hit done. Now, if you recall, that value needs to be uh, the payload of uh, the output. So in this case, I have another function block, and I have message.payload equals message.payload.session count. If you recall from here, the, uh, the object is session count, and then count the first array key, array key zero. Uh, so we're going to just grab that number two and make it the payload, right? Don't worry about anything else because it's just extra overhead. Uh, and then this is a function block. We've got to return something back, and we're going to return that whole message variable back to uh, the next step in the, in the uh, chain of events. And that, that is the active sessions gauge that we're going to have on the graphic user interface. So with that being said, let's clear our debug screen. I do still have the message.payload debug uh, enabled. You can enable or disable that with the, uh, the button here on the side. Uh, we're going to make sure that's deployed. And we're going to hit the button and make it happen. Uh, as you can see, the debug is showing that 2 is the output. Now, we don't see much else happening on this screen. But if we go over to another tab, which is simply the same URL you use to get to Node-RED with a slash UI at the end of it. So slash UI, this is the user interface that's been established. So here you can see, uh, this is a you know, very basic example of course, but you can see the ICE stats, active sessions, active sessions, the active sessions are in fact, there are two active sessions. Uh, and uh, yeah, there you have it. There are the your your first statistical dashboard using the ICE API. Uh, one thing I would probably do to extend this and make it more real time. Come back over to our flow. Uh, you can come into this timestamp, and instead of no repeat, I would have it repeat on some type of interval. You can have it in seconds, minutes, or hours. I would do maybe you know, 15, 30 seconds, something of that nature. So now if you, you deploy that, it's going to happen automatically. And you'll notice as the, the debugging goes along, you'll see more uh, records or more debug outputs listed on the right-hand side. Uh, and likewise, the uh, screen will be updated, right? If the count changes from 2 to 3 or 2 to 10, it will be reflected on that gauge. Uh, if it stays the same, of course, the output will stay the same.